Okay, so now let's talk about the Bramstrahlung radiation. So the characteristic lines are produced by the tube electrons interacting with the K-shell electrons. Now the Bramstrahlung radiation is produced when the tube electrons interact with the nucleus itself. Now remember the tube electrons are very very energetic. So some of them can actually penetrate all the outer shell electrons and come face to face with the nucleus of the atom. And the interaction may look something like this. So remember, the electron is negatively charged and the nucleus is positively charged. That's why the trajectory takes on this curvature. Now there's something that says that when a charged particle undergoes acceleration, it must emit EM radiation. So when an electron experiences a very sharp acceleration, it will emit a very energetic photon and that's the X-ray photon. And the energy of this X-ray photon comes from the Ke lost by the tube electron. So the energy of the X-ray photon is given by the initial Ke minus the final Ke of the tube electron. Now many students are very confused because they thought, hey, isn't the electron attracted by the nucleus? So shouldn't it gain Ke instead of lose Ke? Now be careful here. The tube electron, while it speeds up as it approaches the nucleus, it actually also slows down as it travels away. So if anything, the Ke before and after should be the same. But then on top of this, remember, the electron must emit an X-ray photon. So because of this, its Ke after the interaction has got to be lower than the Ke before the interaction. So even though it speeds up and then slows down, its final speed is actually lower than its initial speed. That's why this is called a breaking radiation. Now what determines the energy of this photon? It depends on how strong the acceleration is. So if the tube electron doesn't get that close to the nucleus, it may lose just 10% of its initial Ke, and therefore the energy of the X-ray photon will be 10% of the initial Ke. If the tube electron gets closer and therefore experiences even stronger acceleration, then maybe this electron will lose 50% of its initial Ke meaning the X-ray photon will have 50% of the initial Ke. If it manages to get even closer and experiences even stronger acceleration, then maybe the tube electron will lose 90% of its Ke to become the energy of the X-ray photon. So what do you think is the maximum energy of the X-ray photon created in this process? It's when the tube electron loses all its initial Ke, right? It's when all the initial Ke of the tube electron is converted into an energy of one single X-ray photon. So the maximum energy of the X-ray photon is simply the initial Ke of the tube electrons. And from here, we can calculate the minimum wavelength of the Bramstrahlung radiation. So this is just the energy of a photon, Hc of lambda. On the other side is the initial Ke of the tube electron, which is of course determined by the accelerating voltage of the X-ray tube. Remember, we use the accelerating voltage to accelerate the tube electrons so that they bang into the target matter really, really hard. So now do you understand why the Bramstrahlung radiation has a continuous spectrum? Because the energy of the X-ray photon produced by this process can be any fraction of the initial Ke. It can be 10%, it can be 10.1%, it can be 10.12%, 20, 30, any percentage, with a maximum being 100% of the initial Ke. From here, we can read the minimum wavelength, sometimes called the cutoff wavelength, and if you are made to calculate the cutoff wavelength, just equates the energy of the photon to the Ke provided by the accelerating voltage. Okay, hope you have a good idea of why the X-ray spectrum has both a discrete component and a continuous component. That's all. Ta-ta!